Welcome back. Today we're going to make this leather quiver. I just started archery and needed something and this was a fun project. Afterwards, we're going to take it to the range and give it a try. So let's get started. I tanned this hide after my daughter got her first deer. Yum! But it's really, really stiff, so we're soaking it in water to soften it up. It's gonna need at least an hour to soak, and I put some rocks on it to hold it down there because it was floating. I let this hide soak overnight, but that was definitely unnecessary. <laughs> So once it was all loosened up, I laid it out and I put down my PVC pipe, which was my kind of my mold, as you would say, for what I wanted. I cut this PVC pipe to 20 inches, which is the standard length of a quiver. And they're usually about three, like three and a half inches wide. So that's what I got. And I am measuring this hide so that I can cut it right where I want it and I'm folding the fur over on the edges because I want to have that folded edge. I don't want to have a, uh, a raw edge as I sew it together. I wanted to fold it so it was fur on the outside and fur on most of the inside. As you can see, I'm using a box cutter here, but please use a sharp one so you don't uh, cut yourself because there's nothing worse than a dull knife because we all know that's uh, a lot more dangerous. <laughs> So anyway, here I am cutting out the shape that I want and make sure to save the scraps because sometimes you need them and you are going to need a piece of the scrap for the bottom. We want to cut out a circular bottom. All right, that looks beautiful, a nice rectangle and I'm gonna check it on my mold PVC pipe. At first I thought I was going to keep the PVC pipe inside to hold the shape, but then I realized my hides are so stiff that they're going to hold their shape no matter what. So there's no need for the PVC pipe. Once it was cut to where I wanted it, let it hang and dry. You don't want it to be completely dry and stiff, but you need it to be more dry. So here it is. It's still soft because I still need it to be pliable, but it's not, it's, it's drier than it was. Now here I'm marking a more um, straight edge because as it dried, it kind of stretched out just a little bit. I'm putting a paint stirring stick underneath so that I can cut this leather with my X-Acto knife without cutting into the table. Now I have a nice flat edge there. So checking it again, checking it again. Can't be too careful because you, you can only cut once, right? Measure twice, cut once. As I said, I'm folding the sides in and look at that come together. That looks beautiful. Stretch it and mold it however you need to make it fit just right. The supplies you're gonna need are a leather hole punch and some leather uh, string. I'm not really sure what that's called, cord. <laughs> that's leather though. <laughs> now I am folding over the top because the top of the quiver, I want it to be folded in so that you can see fur on the outside and the inside. So here I'm marking every few inches I'm going to make a hole punch as my um, sewing holes for the leather. Now get out your scrap hide and here I'm stretching it. Do you see how it turns from that um, ugly gray brown but when you stretch it out it turns a pretty soft white. Pretty magical I must say. Anyway I am cutting out a perfect circle from my mold the PVC pipe because this is going to be our bottom. I got out the X-Acto knife again so I can give that fur a trim so it looks nice and even. I went ahead and used that hole punch and punched even holes along the bottom of the quiver and all the way around our little circle because this gave me the holes I needed to sew. So I used some thick thread. This is like heavy quilting thread that I doubled up. I'm sure there are better threads that you should use, but this is what I had it on hand and it worked really, really well. So here I am measuring again, making sure everything's looking good, measuring over the top, and the bottom is coming along quite well. So right up here on the top, there was just too much bulk. So I went in again with my um, painter's stick and cut out with my X-Acto knife. So the extra bulk so that it didn't, um, yeah, it was just too bulky. I had to get that out of there. <laughs> it was getting in the way. So anyway, I gave that a trim and that really, really helped. Oh, there's my doggo Daisy. or Daisy. Her name's Daisy. <laughs> All right, so here I am finishing up the bottom and it turned out really well. 
They lined up really well. The holes all lined up really well. There's a couple that didn't, but nobody could see, so who cares? <laughs> Once I was done at the bottom, I went ahead and snipped that off. And you're gonna wanna start folding in the sides of the hide and threading in the leather straps. So what I did was I did it a lot like your shoelaces. I just kinda laced it up like shoelaces. And I didn't want to go all the way to the top and have a knot at the top. I wanted it to come a little bit closer to the middle, almost like a corset. Have you seen corsets where they, they lace up from the bottom and down from the top and they meet in the middle? That's kind of what I did here and it worked out really well just because I wanted the knot closer to the middle. So here I am just cinching it up as I go and tying it like shoelaces. So here I finished the bottom half and now I'm punching holes in the top half and I'm just tying off this bottom half and then I'm gonna start back up again from the top and bring it down to the middle. Here we go, just like a shoe. And voila, there you go. Now I let it dry with the PVC pipe in to make it nice and hard so it would hold its shape, but now it's nice and dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out the PVC pipe and look at that, it's holding its shape perfectly. It is super stiff because I'm not good at softening hides yet, gotta figure that out. Anyway, it is super stiff, so it's gonna hold up. So now I got myself a belt that is way too long for me, but that's okay, because I'm gonna cut off the edge. Here we go, now I made the marks. This is four holes that I punched in where I want my quiver to sit on my hip. So once I got those punched in, I held up the quiver and positioned it where I want it to stay. And then once I was satisfied, I marked where my finger was with a Sharpie marker. Now I tried to go in with a leather hole punch, but it just wouldn't reach. So I had to find other means of punching holes. But I used that Sharpie marker to mark my place, which believe me, it was impossible to see even when I made it big because that fur made it impossible to see Sharpie marker. So I got some wood and of course uh, a nice soft foam pad to protect my floor. And I slipped this skinny board inside the quiver and I just nailed a hole through the hide because that hole puncher could not reach as far down as I needed it to. So I went ahead and grabbed whatever rusty nail I had laying around the house and I uh, punched it right in. And it wasn't big enough for the leather straps, so I went back and I found um, something to open up the hole a little bit more, and guess what I found? I found paintbrushes. So I punched through some paintbrushes to widen those holes to make them big enough, and it worked really well. So it's amazing how um, things around the house can really uh, fix problems. So I went ahead and started to thread on my belt, and it was going really, really well. I actually stitched on this belt at the wrong angle, so the quiver was hanging on my hip at the wrong angle, so I had to kind of redo it. Um, no judgment there, but anyway. <laughs> Once I had two holes done and threaded, I went ahead and just pounded the nail through the belt and into the quiver. That way I had the perfect marker and I could make sure that the hole got in the right spot. Now that all the holes were done, I just threaded through the leather strap and tied a good double knot and there you go. It worked like a charm. So here I am testing it out now. If you notice my uh, target arrows, they actually have pretty pointy heads. I didn't notice that they would be that way, but I like them. But I didn't want to damage the quiver, and so I actually put a foam pad on the bottom. I'll show you that later. But the cool thing about this quiver and just this simple belt design is I can actually use it as a back quiver as well. I prefer the hip quiver. It has a lot of advantages, especially for me as a beginner, but I love that I also have the option of a back quiver. It's awesome. So we're gonna take this out on the range and give it a try. It is such a beautiful day out on the target range. Learning archery has been so much fun. I've been doing it with my kids. It has been the best sport and just such a blast. I highly recommend it. All right, now that we've tried it on the hip, we're gonna try it on the back. I really do like it up on the back, but if you'll notice, there are some disadvantages. <laughs> like me trying to find it, 
but I did find it and it just takes some practice. For those of you who do know archery, I would love any advice you have to give. I've been watching lots of YouTube videos, but I could use a lot of help. So here I'm gonna show you the soft foam pad I put on the bottom. Again, I use the PVC pipe as my measuring tool, but I just got this little foam pad out of my sewing kit. Sorry about all the fur. And I cut it out and I put it on the bottom to help prevent these sharp little tips from harming the bottom of my quiver. And if I ever intend to get sharper arrows, then I'm definitely gonna want something a little bit more protective for my quiver. All right, they're going back in now. Again, if you have any advice for me in my um, beginning archery techniques, please let me know. Oh, looks like I'm out. I guess that's a wrap. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. This is the Little Black Shade Tree.